What's happening, Andy? Here I'm joined today by Frank Melozzi. How are you, Frank? I'm doing great, Andy. Great to catch up with you. Great to catch up with you. Uh, last time I saw you was a couple months ago. We were at ECS. We were in uh, in Arizona. It was uh, kind of cool, but but nice, right? A little nicer than Rochester. Oh, it was excellent. Great, great event. It was good catching up with you and the folks in the industry. I've got to tell you, I was I was pretty stoked about the uh, the conference itself. A lot of great content. Content that we wouldn't normally um, sort of be exposed to. And um, I, I'll tell you, I really enjoyed it. And I had a segment where we talked about um, production print, sort of beyond the page, all this, all this other production print in the industrial space. And um, I really, really enjoyed doing the research and, and, and hosting the panel. So it was a lot of fun. Well, that's awesome. Um, and, and I do remember that that panel was great. And production print is obviously a huge huge um area that that uh people watching this video are, are interested in and certainly anyone who knows you knows a little bit about it uh let's let's give me a little bit of background um you know you used to be with efi that's that's the last time i worked with you uh you've got a long history i mean you and i have known each other since you were with rico back in the day so let's start with rico or even before that canon i think um oh, yeah. tell us about frank melozzi what you've been doing and then let's talk about what you're going to be doing so uh, yeah, long time in, in this business. I uh, started um, really with with Canon as a as a product manager in the document management space, and then moved into Inkjet and launched one of the first uh, desktop Inkjet devices. So I got to really know a lot about Inkjet from a product management standpoint. And then um, with, I was familiar with the color laser copiers, and um, I was uh, then recruited from Rico, and Rico wanted to start the color their color program in the United States. So they brought me on board to do that. And um, I, I'll tell you, it was a, it was a great ride. We, uh, we did really well. We took some significant share in a short period of time. So I built the team there. And then, you know, I got to the point where, um, you know, I wanted to do something more and I wanted to do more global, some more global work. And so I got recruited from EFI to run their European business. They never had an American do that. And I never ran European operations. So I moved my family. I did an expat assignment, ran the European business, um, cleaned up the operations, restructured because in in the sort of the OEM business, they were segregated by country. And what I did is I created a more of a pan-European business so that folks from different countries reported to one another and sort of took the borders away. And, and align the business more to the manufacturers. Huge success. And then the global job opened up and I moved to California to run the global business. And um, 45, 45 acquisitions later, uh, we built the business that um, that's currently in place today. So it was a great ride. Um, spent uh, 25 years with EFI building, building businesses, integrating businesses, primarily in production, industrial print, software, of course, aftermarkets, market products, and so on. So really, really good run. Well, that that was just an amazing thing to watch, too, because when we mentioned it before we got on the, the recording here, but, you know, when, when you went over to EFI, when I started really, I mean, I've been watching EFI since their Canon days, right? But when you went over there, that's kind of what they were. They were, you know, workflow production print controllers. That's that's it, graphic arts. And they were they were like this. And by the time you left, they were, you know, this billion dollar company that now is spun off fiery, the original thing that started it all back into its own. So we've come full circle on that. And you were kind of just out there for maybe what, a year, just about a year, just sort of doing your own thing. And now you're not doing your own thing anymore. We've got some big news to announce today. Absolutely. Well, going back to the, the year, I, I I did I did do some work in the channels and yeah. um Help the manufacturer build, you know, start or at least build a production business. Um, but uh, effective next week, I just took on a new role with um, with Konica Minolta. Yes, I'm going to be their uh, president of their um, industrial print and production business, and I couldn't be more thrilled with uh, with it. I am just wow. so. Thrilled. That's yep. awesome. That's awesome. That is um, talk about a great fit, right? So. You know, you we just mentioned you were there for that ride from from with EFI from you know taking that company. Um, I mean, how many you said forty plus acquisitions was that forty five forty five acquisitions right and grew that from a, a essentially from a controller 
company that that became this monster in in print you guys were making super wide format you um you guys were in textile printing you were they still are uh in in some of the other stuff just textile printing Pack like package packaging clothing packaging oh my gosh wraps like textile packaging wraps we were in the label business and then we spun that off and sold that to uh, Zycon yeah but we were early on in the um in the digital into the, into the digital label business and what's interesting is we actually partnered with Konica Minolta early on and they just took it and ran with it. So if you look at their portfolio today and what they have in terms of their offerings in production label, digital production label um, presses, it, it, it's outstanding. And over the years, I had a, I had a, a, a number of opportunities. I worked with Konica Minolta very closely, watched them build a portfolio. And quite honestly, there, there isn't anybody better, I think, in the industry a position for growth in the industrial print than than Konica Minolta. I really like their their portfolio, the their the products, and the uh, the addressable markets that they're that they're targeting is uh, they're 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 all they're all growth the growth the growth markets. So, well, um, they are, and and so tell let's let's get into that a little bit deeper, right? I mean, you know, I, I'm sure you were very happy to take the spot like this, but I'm sure you also had to be wooed. Um, Konica Minolta in, on that stage is, you know, still, I would say still the newcomer, right? You've got some, le some companies that have just been doing it forever and, and, you know, they're known at, at, at super high levels, but Konica, you know, Minolta has kind of elbowed their way in over the years as has a couple of the other manufacturers that didn't start there. And, and so they're kind of poised to take either, either just sort of stay at that level or, or is it time for them to maybe take a step up? into some of the other markets that EFI was um, that, that EFI had moved in and found so lucrative. And, and so, you know, tell me about the portfolio. What do you like about it? And where do you see these guys going over the next five years now that, you know, once you get your, 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 your feet, you know, your feet going. Well, it, it, great, great question. I mean, the, the portfolio is diversified, you know, you'll you, anywhere from every, any, everywhere from wide format products to industrial labels embellishments are huge and they've got a wonderful set of offerings for embellishments because you look at production today it's growing but you know you know you, the business isn't you know isn't going to survive just on that on that sort of moderate growth it's really all about high value production high value output and and Konica's laser focused on 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 that area of the uh, of the of the business um that tied with um B size packaging uh, solutions, inkjet packaging solutions. So I I I really like I like the portfolio. Now look, it's just not about the products itself. Products are table stakes to get in. But what I've learned over the years, when you're you're focusing on that segment of the market, and you've got um, you've got your channels and so on, your longer sales cycles, and you've got to have a, a sort of a go to market discipline. So I spent a lot of time building some really good infrastructure around um, good CRM. And it's not just putting a CRM tool in place. It's putting the tools, the analytics, the reporting. So you've, you, you can track, you can track those, those opportunities over a long sales cycle and, and not, not keep your eye off the ball. You know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a competitive space. And if you're, you know, you're on, you're on that process, you're, you're involved in that process, you, you're going to, you're going to continue to stay focused. So I've learned a lot about, a lot about that. And then coupled with good, strong marketing and branding, I, I, I think we, we've got a great opportunity to go forward. So I'm, I'm excited about that piece of, 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 of the business. Well, there is great branding, great marketing. It's going to be a little different for you, but I mean, you've been in this uh, and on the side of it before working with Rico, working with Canon. So um, first off, you do have experience, you know, working directly with dealers, working with products that you're putting in front of dealers. So I think it's going to be interesting to watch uh, over the little, over the next year or two, you know, the types of products, the direction you kind of go, knowing that, you know, maybe some of the things you did at EFI uh, might not be appropriate for, for this channel. Um Konica Minolta may decide that ultimately they want to go those directions anyways, just because they are good directions. And there are some high end companies, you know, some of those mega dealers, I think, that can play in anything. Right. Yes. So we've got that. 
um, the DEXs, the Marcos, the POAs, right? And Flex Print, uh, Flex and VEIT, all these guys, the big, big guys, um, you know, they, they can do that. It's, that. it's that next level down and it'll be really kind of fun for me to watching you bring labels and label printing and packaging to them because this is, this is an area that, you know, they, they do know they need to diversify. Everybody knows that print's, you know, going to impact them if it already hasn't and some it already has but you know some of the good dealers are, are still growing with it but they know that they want to i think a lot of the good ones want to use that to you know drive use what they're doing well in print now to drive that next thing and that could be packaging that could be label printing um that could be production print that could be other areas managed services right but in the production print area there's so much money to be made in it and you know let's talk about wide format i think that's an area um Konica minolta has relied on partners in the past. I think they've had Kip, they've had HP, you know, good partners. Um, but you, you know, you were there when EFI didn't have anything in that. And then suddenly they had a lot of it. And that what do you, what do you think of that? And how do you think, you know, what do you think of the opportunity for Konica Minolta in wide, large format, wide format? What do you think for dealers? Konica Minolta has um, a, a great wide format lineup and will continue to evolve. You know, I, I want to go back to your point when you talked about dealers. I, I, I've i managed dealer business, direct operations, and actually managed both. You know, my, I probably spent more 50, it's like a, it was 50, 50, 50% 50 of our business came from uh, direct. The other 50% came from dealer. I don't want to exclude our partners that are out there. I, I have a philosophy is working working with our partners. You have more touch points. You have a greater reach in the marketplace. And if we could create programs, which we can, because Konica Minolta knows how to do it, they've been doing it, you plug those types of products in place, um, I, I think that we'll get some take from the dealer community. So I, I think that's a, I think it's a great opportunity. And it and the market's growing. Wide format is is diversified a lot. Everybody thinks when you look at wide format that you're going to put a um, point of sale poster up and you're printing onto vinyl or cardboard. But oh my gosh, a wide format has moved into so many different verticals, and it's understanding the applications of what you can actually do. You know, wide format can um, adds color to high end shoes, leather shoes, leather handbags. Um, I've seen watch bands, leather watch bands created on wide format presses and then cut down into a small size. So the applications are endless. And when you look at the technology and you look at the um, even the partners that Econica Minolta has uh, embraced over the years, um, we can address those high growth areas. And I'm excited about, about that piece of it as well. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity. I think for the dealer, you look in the U.S., there's lots of opportunities for the dealer um, in the United States. I think in white format, I most certainly think in textile, because mm. when you think about textile and textile production, Western Europe, U.S., they're not very strong in, in the manufacturing of, of garments. It's usually done in Bangladesh and Pakistan and Turkey and markets. Those are your traditional production markets. But with digital technology, the onshoring is starting to evolve. And so what a great opportunity for these, these markets that, um, that, that are interested in, in textile production to go forward with it. And I think we have a, an opportunity to, uh, to move on that. So I, I kind of, I kind of I'm really interested in that piece as well. So wide format, the label business is, is, is growing. You know, when you start having locally grown smaller production you know the market is responding to that they like that 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 local and local what does that do it it, it generates um a short run and short run can only really be accomplished with digital technology so i kind of think that's going to be a great opportunity there as well oh i definitely agree i you know the wide format, short run, you know, the, just the whole digital analog to digital is still a story. It's still, you know, we're, we're getting into it. We're getting further along with it, but there's still a lot out there that's just sitting there because people, 
you know, people don't like change. People don't like to have to invest. It's sometimes it's just, even though you know you're going to have a savings and all these benefits, it's still sometimes hard to write that check. So I think there is still, this isn't copiers. This is still, you know, there are still people out there using traditional presses to, to run jobs and, you know, with cutters and finishers and way more steps than they need to. And, you know, people, people don't buy that way anymore. People don't want, you know, boxes and boxes of manuals sitting in their, right. in their closet. They want to print them when they need them, right? At 10 at a time, because I've got a class coming up tomorrow or next week. So um, let, let's, 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 let's give you a tough one. I'm not going to, I'm going to give you a tough one. You know, you're looking at the, at the portfolio um, and I'll phrase it nicely. What, what are you looking at to change? What are you looking at when you sit back and you say, ah, you know, we're kind of close, but I think if we just did a couple things, we could really take something to the next level. What, what are you excited to really dig into over there and, and um, fill in a hole or upgrade or what, what's, what's got you all pumped up? Well, first I, 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 I start next week and I look forward to that. Uh, I think you, people that know me and in, in my leadership, I'm one where I try to lead by example. And what I what I mean by that is I wouldn't give anybody a challenge if I didn't didn't, didn't do it myself. And so one of the things I've I've always managed, you know, I have a philosophy is, look, I, I I speak on behalf of the customer. So what I want to do is get in front of the customers, understand what they're looking for, what are the things that are missing in their sort of in their their portfolio and their product product line. We're a technology company, so my job is to take that, distill it and then represent the customer when I'm speaking to the powers to be, whether they're in product development and the marketing folks and so on. So have a really nice, create a good conduit from the market itself to those developing products. So you get it right. And um, over the years, I've identified some of those opportunities um, in my past, and I'm looking forward to taking that playbook and applying it to here. Uh, Cause I, I, uh, it, it it's worked and it's worked well. So I think that's uh, that's something I'm anxious to to do and get back in, in doing. You know, and you mentioned something in in the past year. I I enjoyed doing some consulting work. I didn't realize this about myself. One of the things that I missed is you advise, you help develop, but you don't own it. And that I have that fire in in my belly to kind of want more ownership of the business and having my own team and driving that, that That's it. you have, you know, when you're not part of, when you're part of a big team for all those years, especially when you're leading the team, you know, you've been the quarterback for a long, long time. And all of a sudden you, you know, you, you had a couple, you had a year off where you were just sitting back watching and, and announcing isn't the same thing, right? Sitting in the broadcaster booth, not the same thing, <laughs> but it helps. It helps you. It, you you miss it though. Years. I, I missed it. I didn't realize that, you know, after 25 years, what you do year after year is a derivative of rinse and repeat. And then you go do your thing. Removing myself, it allowed me to think a little bit different, use a different part of my brain, kind of get more in touch. And I feel like that year has given me sort of, um, it's enabled me to really understand that, oh gosh, there's some great opportunities out there and still got tons of gas in the tank and I'm ready to rock and roll. So it's all it's all good. Really well, excited. This has been awesome. Thank you guys for you know allowing me to to break this story. This was a real treat for me. And I mean, man, I've known you since um, you were one of the first people I met in this industry. Uh, you know, when I came down and visited Rico with my dad, and we were working on a project with Captain Color, Rich Matina, I think. I remember that? And, uh, <laughs> yep, it was back. It was a while ago. And you know, just to 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 see where where you've gone and and what you did at at EFI and, you know, the opportunity, I think that Konica Minolta had with that spot, you know, for you, um, it's just such a good match. I really feel like there's a, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to hopefully watch this for a while and, and uh, see a lot of really positive changes that I think people are going to like. I, I just, I think Konica has got a lot of really good pieces of the puzzle there. They're, they're certainly one of the leaders in production print. And now, you know, I think bringing you in somebody who's seen, you know, all different sides of it from customer side to all the competitive sides. Cause you worked with everybody. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch. So congratulations to both you and Konica Minolta. And, and uh, I just, what a, what a great fit. What a great fit. Look, and Sam and the team, um, they've done a great job. There's a, a great yep. foundation um, from what I've, I've seen thus far. 
Um, they did they did an, an absolutely perfect job to um, to really establish their footprint into the space. And um, I'm looking forward to working alongside that team um, and see what kind of value I can I can add to take it to the next step. So that part is is exciting. Well, they they need you know they want somebody in there to help them sell it, and I think you're a good fit for it. So, um, but thank you guys. This was great, and Thanks. you know, congrats and good luck to it. And uh, I'll give you uh, some advice that my dear friend Jim Demidio gave me when I took over this spot. And uh, don't don't f it up. I think we're his exact <laughs> words. So uh, on, that's good on, advice. <laughs> yeah, it's great advice. It's great advice. But on that note, um, this has been great. I'll let you have one last shout out. You want to say uh, one last message to everybody? Oh, look, I look forward to, to meeting the team um, and meeting the folks out there to take it to the to the next step. And, and like I said, um, I'm, I'm here really to represent the customer, customer needs and leverage the great technology that uh, the company has and provides and refine it for uh, for growth. So awesome. Well, good. Congratulations. This was a treat. Thank you. And we um, we will see you soon. And uh, you know it, Andy. Take thank care. you. Take care. All right. Good catching up. Thanks.